This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this infinite loop graphic using Inkscape. And at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So I'll minimize this and I'll get started here on Inkscape. Uh, by the way, if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear darkened with these custom icons, a link to that information will be in the description of the video. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that the view is set to custom and then we'll zoom in at one-to-one -one. and we'll open up the align and distribute menu with that button. Uh, we're going to want last selected chosen from that drop-down and then we'll open up the edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu. So the first thing we want to do is create a square. So let's come over to the squares and rectangles tool and hold control and shift in the keyboard and click and drag to create a perfectly symmetrical square, maybe about that big, pretty small. And uh, I'll take the opacity of this and bring this down in half and I'll turn that red and convert that to a path. But first make sure you have, make sure it has sharp corners and you could do that by clicking this button right here. If this button is deselected, you're good to go. But if you can click that button, go ahead and click it. And then once we have it set, we'll go to path, object to path, and then we'll turn on the snap to cusp nodes function. And we'll go back to the select tool and we're gonna take this box and we're gonna duplicate it by holding control and pressing D on the keyboard. And we'll take that duplicated copy and turn it green. And then I'm just gonna click and drag this down here and snap it to that corner like that. And I'll click and drag over both of those, hit control D to duplicate them, put this down here, then I'll click and drag over both of those, hit Control D to duplicate it again, snap that on there, and I'll just hit Control D one more time to create more uh, copies and put this down here. So at this point you should have six uh, red boxes and six green boxes. So one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so we're good there. And we can click off of it to deselect everything and then click on just the green copy and press delete and just go ahead and do that and get rid of all the green copies. That green copy was just as a spacer to make sure everything's spaced out evenly. Uh, and once we've done that, we can click and drag over all, all six of those red boxes and unify them together by going to Path, Union. And then we want to come over here to between the width and the height and turn on this lock icon and change the height of this to 100. So we'll erase that, whatever that number is, just type in 100 and hit Enter. And then we'll uh, move this up to the right. We'll right click that and go to copy. And then we'll grab the circles and ellipses tool. Hold control and shift in the keyboard and click and drag to create a perfectly round circle like that. And we'll go back to the select tool. We want to make sure that this is 150 pixels in width. So we'll change whatever number this is. Change that to 150. Hit enter. And then convert that to a path by going to path. Object to path. And then we're going to take these boxes that we have copied and wrap them around this shape to create the beginning of the round part of this graphic. So with this selected, we'll go to Path, uh, Path, Path Effect Editor, and go from the drop-down, choose Pattern Along Path, then click Add. And we're going to want Single Stretched selected from this drop-down, and then we can press the button that says Link to Path. And you'll see it took it and wrapped it around the path like that. And once you have it set like that, we could finalize it by going to Path, object to path, and then we can close out of the path effect editor menu. Now what we're going to do is take these red boxes and we want to raise them to the top and we want to turn off the lock icon and change the width of them to 150. So just hit 150 and hit enter. And then we can just move these over here and snap it to the center point of the circle right there. So let me zoom in on that to show you. I'm going to press plus on the keyboard a few times. If you notice the top left corner of the red rectangle snaps right to the center point of this red uh, green circle right there. So I'll uh, press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. Then with this, these red rectangles selected, I want to duplicate them by hitting Control D. And we'll turn that copy blue. And then we'll click this button that says Rotate Selection 90 degrees clockwise. And I'm going to zoom in again to show you. It's now snap to that side. So we shouldn't have to move this and snap it. It should already be there. So that's pretty good like that. And what we want to do now is let's click on the red rectangles and let's copy them by right clicking it and going to copy. And then we'll create another rectangle. The squares and rectangles tool click and drag. We'll make a rectangle. <clears throat> we'll make this black and we'll go to edit 
paste size and type in and just select paste size and it's going to make it the same width and height that this object that we copied is. And we'll take the select tool, hold shift, and click on the red rectangles and center it on the vertical and horizontal axis then click off of it to deselect. Then we can take this, um, this black object and duplicate it by hitting control D and hold shift and click on the green object and go to path difference. Then we can take the black object, we'll duplicate it again by hitting control D, hold shift, click on the blue rectangles and go to path difference. And then we'll take this black object, we'll rotate it around 90 degrees clockwise and then hold shift and click on the green objects and go to path difference. And what we want to do now is click and drag over all of this and go to path break apart and then click off of it to deselect everything and you'll see we broke everything up into individual little pieces which is what we're going to need for what we do next. So now that we've done that let's zoom in over this bottom portion. We'll just press plus in the keyboard a few times. I'm going to take this little green object right here and just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And I'm going to take this red, I'm going to take one of these red rectangles right here and I'll press control D to duplicate that and I'll just take this and snap this to the corner of this blue object right here like that. And then I want to click and drag over all of those blue objects so I have them all selected and go to path uh, union and then hold shift and click on the red object right on top of it and go to path intersection. And we want to do the same thing over here for this side. So let's take one of these red uh, rectangles again. We'll duplicate that by hitting control D. We'll rotate this one around 90 degrees clockwise. And I'm just going to turn this one green so you can see it up against the other red rectangles. And I'm going to take the top left corner and snap it to the bottom right corner of that blue object right there. And then I'm going, to, I'm going to click on this red rectangle and then hold shift and click on all of the other red rectangles so we have all of the red shapes selected. And with them selected, we'll go to Path Union. And then we can take this green object and we can take this arrow on the left and just pull this all the way out until it's wider than the rest of the red shapes right there. And then hold shift, click on the red objects and go to Path Intersection. And then Path Break Apart and then click off that to deselect everything. So let's click on these blue objects down here. We'll break them apart as well. We'll go to Path, Break Apart. And now everything once again should be back to being broken apart into individual objects. And what we want to do now is go ahead and color each one in. So uh, to start out, let me press one on the keyboard to zoom out. Actually, you're going to press plus a few times to zoom in. We want to be about that much zoomed in. We're going to take this outer ring first. So let's click on this green outer ring and then hold Shift and click on this red stripe that connects to the green outer ring and then hold shift and click on the blue object that connects to that outer ring and then hold shift again and click on this blue object that connects to all of that and we're going to unify that all together by going to path union and we could bring the opacity of that all the way up and make that a shade of red and I just want to reference back to the thumbnail here I went blue gray green and then purple so the next one will be blue, so we'll click on this green outer ring, hold shift, click on that red object, holding shift the whole time, click on that blue object, and then the corresponding blue object down here. Unify it all together by going to path, union, bring the opacity all the way up, and I'm going to make this a shade of blue. I'll go with this one down here, the uh, 00CCFF. You could use whatever colors you like. And under the HSL tab, for the fill tab, I'm just going to take this H row and slide that to the right a little bit. And I'll go with that shade right there. And then next we have gray, green, and purple. So for this one, um, I'll click this green object, hold the shift, click the red one, the blue one, and then the blue one down here. Unify it all together by going to Path, Union. Bring the opacity up and make this one a shade of gray. And that's pretty good. Do the same thing, click this green object, hold shift, click this red object, and then this blue object, and then the corresponding blue object down here, and go to path, union. And for this one, I used green, so I'll bring the opacity all the way up. It's already green, but I'm going to use a different shade of green. I'm going to go with something like this. That's pretty good. And then again, we'll click this green object, hold shift, click this red object, and then this one, and then this one, while holding shift the whole time. 
and go to path union bring the opacity all the way up and for this one I made this one I believe purple so we'll make that a shade of purple maybe like that and finally we have the inner stripe so we'll click this green object hold shift click the red click the blue and then the blue down here unify that all together by going to path union bring the opacity all the way up and I'm just gonna make this the same shade of red that I used over here so I'll press F7 to grab the dropper and I'll just click on that red object to make that the same shade of red and then we can go back to the select tool we can press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to hundred percent and I'm gonna click and drag over all of those and group them together and then I'm gonna duplicate that by hitting control D and I'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees clockwise rotate selection 90 degrees clockwise and hold control to move this off to the right and then hold shift and click on this object so we have them both selected and click the button over here to the far right that says align left edges of the object to the right edge of the anchor and it's gonna put them together like that and we can group them together and then duplicate this again by hitting control D we're gonna flip this horizontally and then flip it vertically and hold control and move this down here and hold shift and click on that object and click the button over here that says align top edge of the object to the bottom edge of the anchor and click on that and now we can click and drag over the whole thing and group it together and then click on it again to get the rotation handles and just hold control and rotate it around until it's sitting upright like that and you could hold control and shift and scale it down if you'd like or you could change the colors or do whatever you'd like you can make this an entire single color maybe um, like a dark dark gray almost black like that and that's that's pretty much it that's how you can create that infinite loop uh, graphic using Inkscape so if you have any questions let me know and as always thank you for watching